ideal for us to be on the mountain because anyone should have the right to sit on the mountain and to watch the moon to see the sun rise and other people should not have the right to say no you cannot sit on this stone um, you're not allowed to be here or that this is private property the mountain should belong to all people forever and all human beings should have the right to climb Mont Sago any time they like and to watch the sun rise and to watch the moon rise so I had a big problem with this desire to restrict access this is a problem that has engulfed Stonehenge and other ancient monuments where they will only allow you to go to Stonehenge in business hours you have to buy a ticket it is time coded you're not allowed to touch the stones you have to basically ab abide by the rules and this um, makes it impossible for any of us to have a direct relationship with a site like Stonehenge. You can't go there to see the full moon rise. There was massive fighting in England over the rights of the Druids to see the solstice sunrise to get into the stone, the stone ring. And I do not want to see the same happen here in months ago. I do not want some assholes in charge to say, okay, you're not allowed to come for the solstice or you're not allowed to, um, to be on the mountain. It is not their mountain. And, you know, it belongs to the world heritage, it belongs to all the people of this planet Earth. It does not belong to any corporate group. It does not belong to Robert Finance. It does not belong to the French government. It should be free for all. So um, this was my first problem was the access. Um, I don't care whether they make a, a tourist promotion, but they must not stop other people from coming. Um, they, it, it should not be for the tourists alone. Uh, and then my second problem was with um, the the intention to try to floodlight the castle, to um, light the site at night by pumping hundreds of thousands of watts of 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 electricity and light into the onto the castle every night. The initial intention was they wanted to light the castle so it could be seen from Toulouse Airport. The idea being that people flying in on the aeroplane would see this lit castle on top of a mountain and maybe it would encourage tourism. But um, for me it is a monstrous destruction of the, of the site. Um, at night the castle is very tre tre tranquil. It's very beautiful. And um, it is the home to a lot of toads and owls. Um, sitting in, on the battlement at night, listening to those owls calling and seeing the moon over the mountains. It's the happiest that I am. Uh, um, it is my favorite place in the world, and I do not want to see this lit up as an advertisement. Um, it's, um, also, it's, it worries me to use a place which is about spirit, and where people died in their opposition to the material world for commerce. It doesn't feel right to use months ago for advertising or for, um, or for money. It's not what this place should be about. <coughs> <coughs> So I had a problem with the project months ago and um, we raised awareness and got um, some international attention and there was a petition against um, the disfiguration of, of the site which forced um, the mairie to make some concessions and last year the project agreed to not build a visitor's centre on the field of the stake and not to make construction work on the site. And they agreed not to stop access, not to build a wall or a fence, or to put a gate, or to put CCTV, or to make it illegal to, um, to climb the mountain unless you buy a ticket. Um, it was very important to, to me that um, this path remain open. And, and a third agreement was that they agreed not to light the castle. And we had to find um, environmental reasons there are many endangered species that would be affected who, which are nocturnal like the bats we have a very rare species of um, Pyrenean long-eared bat which would be affected if you pump huge amounts of light into its habitat the owls would be affected the toad would be affected and the salamander we have a unique species of salamander which is also a nocturnal a nocturnal animal so um, we made a strong argument not to um, to make this a trustee, but I think that um, for obvious reasons the people in charge do not like that civilians and crazy people like myself and my friends um, get in their way or try to impede their plans to make money. Mm -hmm. So um, now this year we see a new problem coming with the talc mine 
uh, the mining concession. Nobody told us about it. The first we saw was we saw lights on the mountain at night on the peak de Saint Barthélemy. And then I saw they were cutting a road. And then I wanted to know what this road was and what, what, what these lights were. It was the coming of the mining company. And in just a few months, they have made a big mark in the, in the front of the mountain. They've really taken a lot of the, the mountain and they're working this seam 24 hours a day. Plus, um, about one month ago in the castle, someone painted pink spots on all over the castle and all over the steps on the way up to the castle, fluorescent pink paint, spray paint on the battlement and on in the old Cathar ruins on the east face and um, in the tower and in both gates, Le Port de la Homme and Le Port de, de, de Dieu, the gate of man and the gate of the gods, both have um, big pink spots. Mm. Outside the, port, uh, the gate of the gods, the east face, the east gate, there was once a beautiful tree. There was once there a big old oak and um, in the last few years this tree has been cut down now we have first a metal signpost and now there's a pink, pink fucking fluorescent spot painted in um, in, in just fluorescent um, spray paint and they tell us that um, they are saving the site from vandalism yet all I've seen is that they have cut instead of a beautiful tree now I just have some rubble and a pink spot which to me is vandalism they say the other people who are dangerous, but in the entire 27 years that I've been coming here, I've never seen anyone take a spray can and paint with fluorescent paint on the wall of the castle. This to me is total vandalism. So I was shocked to see that they were um, making these signs. And to me, the pink spots also probably mean that there are signs for work, that there's going to be construction work of some point, of, of, of some nature. And that they have, so I wanted to know what the um, the meaning of these pink spots were, who painted them, and what what its meaning was. And I went to the museum, and in the museum I say, hey, there are pink spots all over the castle. Does anyone know what what this is about? And the people in the museum who are working with Project Monsago say, we don't know. You must talk to the mairie. So I make an appointment with the mairie, and I go to see Robert Finance at maybe um. It was like 8.30 or 9 a.m. in the morning. And I asked the same questions. I asked about um, the expansion of the, of the talc mine, of the quarry, and what are these pink spots on the chateau, on the, uh, who, uh, why, why is this being done? And again, he says that he doesn't know the answer, that he says that the pink spots are, the, uh, are painted by the Graham, the archaeological group, who he says are carrying out some kind of survey of the geometry of the castle and that I should speak to the Graham. I don't believe him because I can't believe that the mayor and no one in the museum knows anything about where these fluorescent pink marks are coming from. But then on the same day that I met Robert Finance, maybe within um, <clears throat> five, six hours later, it was about 8.30 in the morning, I have the meeting with the mayor. About three o'clock that afternoon, I'm informed that I have to leave my house, that I'm evicted. It happens very fast. Maybe it is a coincidence, but it seems strange that right after I talk to the mairie, I receive orders that I have to vacate the house that I'm living in. Unfortunately, I have no rights because it is not my house I am renting. Uh, if the landlord is evicting me, then I cannot um, do anything about it. But it was, yeah, very aggressive. And um, <coughs> my rent is paid until the beginning of next year. It is not because I have not paid rent or that I am behind. So um, from this I started to feel that um, maybe um, the powers that be, the landowners here in Montsegur, have decided that um, the time has come to try and get rid of me. The... Um, official explanation given by the landlord is he wants to tear this house down and to make um, tourist sheets to make um, tourist accommodation because right now I'm paying him um, 400 euros a month to live here 
plus water plus electricity. But he thinks if he tears it down, maybe he can make and restores it for tourists. Maybe he can make eight hundred euros a month instead, and um, double the income that he is getting. It's very greedy. But who à qui appartient la maison? Who who is the owner of the house? The owner is okay for the house to be destroyed. Yes, the the owner's idea. He wants to make more money. Just for money, you think? Yeah. Plus, it, uh, it's be better for everyone if I'm out of the way. Yes, uh, that's uh, the, the point. Uh, and, uh, but of course, they do not say it. They do not put it this way. They, they, but um, this is the impression I get. Um, I, I want to talk uh, just uh, f uh, about uh, 